there was a time when every corporate interview I was doing, it seemed to be stuck in Groundhog Day, shooting on green screen. Most of this was before big sensors were available for video. So I was shooting analog beta SP and then uh, on through the digital formats, DVC Pro, DV Cam, digital beta cam on two thirds inch cameras. But now, I believe it's been two years since my last green screen. It's been so long, I couldn't find them. I had my blues at the house, but the greens were in storage. Loading in at a resort 10 minutes from my house. Also, my last big project of the year. So super nice to end something so close to home. This is my only, my second assignment this year that's under 10 minutes from the house. So my son... Um, Overdid it on lunch and filled his belly with things he's allergic to. Wasn't the best decision. So you can see him hurting here as we get the gear unloaded. So we're going to have two cameras in a green screen room and then two other cameras out shooting B-roll, gimbal, and tripod slash handheld. I got Eric on this one on sound. Got someone else running camera. There's Sam, who's the B-roll DP for the next two days. Sam and Vanessa are a production team here in town. They've got a location with a studio in San Antonio, Screenville Films. Great team. They shoot uh, primarily on Canon, so C300 Mark III. And then also on this day, he had, uh, i got to think here for a second, an R5C. And I believe he also has a, a C70 package and a whole assortment of Canon lenses to choose from. So we kicked off our load-in day with some executive interviews, and there was also a little bit of B-roll, but it was a, a late call. We came in just after lunch, and we, I think we only shot for like two hours. The, the bulk of our afternoon was just getting set up and teched out. We decided to just run the boom, and we had a wireless lab on standby. What's that? Just set up this prompter return. Say hi to Sam. Hey, Virtual Sam. Sam. <laughs> Oh, really? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah. That's great. You can time that. That's great. That's cool. There we go. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of a like challenge accepted. I want to try it out. No, that's great. And interviews. Credit to documentary filmmaker Errol Morris. I don't know if it was Errol Morris or Werner Herzog that first made it super popular with their documentaries. But uh, nowadays, it seems everyone refers to it as iDirect or it's like the Zoom style. Day two, this may be my last shoot day of 2023. It's only the 6th of December. I'm hopeful I'll get a little more work, but I tend to not get anything past the 15th. Beck still got his learner's permit and cart operation. Got it. Did the left side break? No, that was the right side. Nice to see Sam is ahead of schedule. Fancy cart and he's set up before I get there. Long day of interviews, back to back, windowless room. We had the next subject in the makeup chair getting made up while we're rolling on the current one. So there was from no downtime to, I think we got max of maybe about 10 minutes sometimes. But uh, we were chewing through cards, shooting 4K on two cameras. I was offloading while we were rolling on interviews, fortunately to two SSDs client provided. And another application for the Craftsman tool chest, it can also serve as a shelf and sound cart. We got through the full show of two days of interviews with just the boom, didn't have to wire up anybody with a hidden wireless lav, which always makes me happy to not have to deal with that awkwardness and ultimately just poor sounding mic through clothing. This worked out to be a good payday project for me. I got two cameras, well, three, including the Teratron FX3 working, teleprompter rental, van package for lighting, additional a la carte rental on the green screen backdrop. Our iDirect camera set up on a Peak Design tripod. I just got this recently. I love it because it fits in the Pelican case with the FX3. So one item to pull out of the truck and I've got a full camera set up. Hey, if you have a suggestion for how to use a laptop built-in camera over HDMI out without actually being on like a call where I'm looking at the far side, I want to do that with just a laptop in the same room. Uh, let me know if you have some ideas. 
checking out Sam's Flowtech tripod. Each time I look at these things, people keep telling me, hey, you got to upgrade your sticks. And then I price them out and I'm like, you know what? I'm good with the extra 10 seconds it takes me to deploy my old school Zackler sticks. Uh, it has yet to cost me a missed B-roll opportunity. Key lights, uh, 300D with a 105 centimeter parabolic softbox with an inner baffle. And then I set up an F22X on the fill side. Once we got going, I was thinking, you know what, because these are direct to lens, I could have just run an F22 on each side. The light placement's so close to the subject that uh, it was plenty of soft fill. Then running my old newer panels on battery just to illuminate the green screen, one on each side. The dimmer on these is set to the minimum daylight only. And even then, they're actually a little bit punchy. Basically, we were exposing for ISO 800 on the FX9 in S-Log3, but then I lose about a stop going through the teleprompter glass. So, you know, it's effectively like rating for 250, and then I wanted to shoot an, a 5.6 just so the subject's shoulders, face, nose, everything is sharp relative to the, the green screen off in the distance. I don't want to have any depth of field softening uh, someone's shoulders, making the key a little bit more difficult. And then I had another newer panel overhead as a downlight uh, to glow shoulders. But uh, this gentleman, due to his hairstyle, lack of hair, uh, just clicked off the light. Looks better without versus with. 105's been good, but now that I got the F22s, I think I prefer them. The 105, when you look at the light source, because of the inner baffle and the light leak around the outer diameter, it's not like a uniform diffused light source although i haven't really seen that affecting how someone's face renders or shadows but when you look at these flexible light mats like the f22 it's the same intensity light from edge to center don't recall my dimmer settings but uh, there's some shots coming up where we'll see where we were set to this year it seems like every time i'm on set and i pull out a 300 aperture someone has to say do you have a 600 on the truck i think you need a 600 how come you don't have a 600 and i never run these things at 100 percent. like the 300 has been good for me the one scenario where i may break down and buy one is when i get these van package rentals where i'm just local production support because again like every dp wants an aperture 600 and then we run it at 10 20 percent and it wasn't a budget thing for me. It's a space issue on the truck. I have a lot more free space available for additional lights and gear carrying two Aperture 300s versus a three and a six or two sixes. And most of my work last two years is one man band or it's me plus one. And the 600 is just, it's a bigger light. It's more weight. It needs a heavier stand, needs more sand. Staged all our cases and carts concealed behind the green screen to minimize the clutter for all of the executives coming in to be interviewed and then just overall just trying to keep the set tidy rolling on these long interviews i get time to look around the room and kind of see things to keep the crew tidying up there's always clutter and items that can be made to look a little neater when you get these extended down periods one place i feel like i'm always lacking is keeping cable runs neat and clean now that's not necessarily taping them down I just want to do a better job 90 degree runs always run around the perimeter of the room when possible think about where talents walking to and from and prevent any cable runs from happening in that aisle we did this in this case we ran all our cables on the right hand side of the room but we had the lane set up to walk out to the t on the left hand side one thing i've observed working on bigger union shows while i had limited experience in that world but being on the lots in los angeles the union electricians do a phenomenal job of keeping their cable runs neat. The heavy cam lock cable, they run them side by side. Everything's neat, nice 90 degree turns. They do that for heat management, but also just keeping things clean and tidy. Run around the perimeters of walls whenever possible by default. And then you do a 90 degree turn out to your branch so you prevent a spaghetti on set. Like you can see here with our loadout. Same as my previous shoot up in Dallas, the day after this project wrapped, I was wiped out, super tired, took a nap, and it wasn't because this was physically demanding, it was from the stress of hiring and managing five other crew members, plus all of my gear on site and the additional gear that other crew members were bringing, making sure everything was coordinated, compatible, 
this is another mid-range corporate job where we had two producers on site, but they're both staff client side and their responsibility is managing and coordinating schedule and conducting interviews, handling these executives. It's not hiring call sheets, getting the crew there on time. It falls on me, the DP, to handle all that. Uh, really, I feel like I need a production manager, but this is just at that size. And at this point in time, that doesn't seem to be a thing anymore. And I'll take it. It was good money. I appreciate the work.